Day 42 Trump Civil Fraud Trial Trump's defense witnesses bill nearly $900,000 each. Costly defense strategies. In the high-stakes civil fraud trial of former President Donald Trump in New York, the financial toll of his defense strategy is coming to light. Expert witnesses for Trump's defense have reportedly billed exorbitant fees for their testimony, with accounting professor Eli Bartov revealing that he pocketed approximately $877,500 for proclaiming the absence of any accounting fraud in Trump's financial dealings. Bartov, who charged a staggering $1,350 per hour for about 650 hours of work, disclosed that the payments came from both the Trump Organization and Trump Save America PAC. This revelation provides a glimpse into the substantial costs incurred in just one facet of Trump's multifaceted legal battles, where the Save America PAC has already spent $40 million in the first half of this year alone. Legal Maneuvers and Common Dynamics The disclosure of Bartov's compensation triggered tensions in the courtroom, with Trump's attorney, Alina Habba, expressing frustration about objections raised by the attorney general's team. Amidst this financial scrutiny, another expert witness for the defense, Frederick Chin, admitted billing $850 per hour for 1,000 hours of work, totaling $850,000. In contrast, the state's sole expert witness, Michael McCarty, acknowledged receiving $950 per hour but worked significantly fewer hours, making approximately $350,000 for his testimony. The courtroom drama extended to heated exchanges, with Bartov clashing with state attorney Kevin Wallace, who accused the expert of engaging in pure speculation hired to say whatever favored the defense. As the defense attempts to challenge the grounds of the lawsuit and judge in Goran's prior rulings, the exorbitant fees of Trump's expert witnesses shed light on the substantial financial investment behind his defense strategy, raising questions about the broader implications for Trump's legal battles and the financial strain on his resources. Bartov's testimony about his compensation followed a tense exchange in which defense attorney Alina Habba accused Judge Ngoran of wasting time and money by ignoring expert testimony. Why are we wasting our time if nobody is considering the words coming out of our experts' mouths? Habba stated. Judge Ngoran denies the defense's fourth request to end trial. The courtroom drama reached a climax on the second day of Eli Bartov's testimony as the defense relentlessly pursued its fourth attempt to prematurely conclude the trial. After his fiery demonstration yesterday, Trump himself vouched for Bartov's credibility, labeling him as a highly respected expert witness. He told reporters, he found absolutely no fraud, accounting fraud of any kind. This is a highly respected man. I don't know him, but he's an expert witness. The defense strategically positions itself to challenge the motives and conclusions of this key figure, potentially turning the tide in favor of the former president. As Bartov vigorously defended Trump's financial statements, asserting the attorney general's case lacked merit, defense attorney Christopher Keiss clashed with state attorneys over the core narrative of the trial. The heated exchange, marked by objections and disputes over the values of Trump's properties, culminated in a plea from Keiss to establish a clear standard for the case's direction. However, Judge Arthur and Goran, who had previously ruled on fraudulent financial statements in a pretrial decision, reiterated the central premise that false statements in business are at the core of the case. And Goran's insisted on the standard of truth, despite Kais's argument. You can't use false statements in business. That's what the summary judgment decision is all about. I think it is pretty much what the rest of this case is about, and Goran responded to Kais's question. This prompted Trump's spokesperson, Alina Habba, to make the defense's fourth motion for a directed verdict, emphasizing that the trial was veering off course. In a swift denial, and Goran dismissed the motion immediately, reinforcing the courtroom dynamics where the judge remained resolute in his position despite the defense's repeated efforts to curtail the proceedings. Eli Bartov will continue his testimony on Tuesday. The New York University professor will continue his testimony in court on Tuesday after his direct examination took longer than expected. During the trial, state attorney Louis Solomon will cross-examine Bartov, but this was postponed until next week due to time constraints. On Monday, Donald Trump is scheduled to be the only witness. Once Bartov finishes his testimony, New York Attorney General Letitia James will present a brief rebuttal case. Appeals Court maintains gag order on Trump election subversion case. In another legal blow, an appeals court has upheld a substantial portion of the gag order against former President Donald Trump, on December 8, in the federal election subversion case. The court's ruling restricts Trump from discussing witnesses, prosecutors, court staff, and their family members signaling a significant admonishment for the ex-president facing an impending criminal trial. The decision underscores concerns that Trump's public statements could compromise the fairness of a jury trial, intimidate witnesses, and endanger court staff. 
Despite limitations, the court affirms Trump's right to criticize President Joe Biden, the Justice Department, and argue that the prosecution is politically motivated. The court wrote, as a high-ranking government official who exercises ultimate control over the conduct of this prosecution, the special counsel is no more entitled to protection from lawful public criticism than is the institution he represents. Balancing free speech and trial integrity. According to CNN, he three appeals court judges, Patricia Millett, Nina Pillard, and Bradley Garcia, all Democratic appointees, issued the ruling, emphasizing that Trump's documented pattern of speech and its real-world consequences pose a significant and imminent threat to the functioning of the criminal trial process. The court wrote, that allows the former president to continue to speak out about those same person's books, articles, editorials, interviews, or political campaigns as long as he does so in a manner that does not concern their roles as witnesses or the content of any expected testimony. This decision aligns with a similar gag order in a civil fraud trial against Trump in New York, reinforcing the court's commitment to ensuring the fair administration of justice in criminal cases. Despite Trump's intention to appeal, the court maintains a firm stance, emphasizing that even as a former president and a presidential candidate, Trump must adhere to the rule of law and stand trial under the same procedures as any other criminal defendant. Thanks for watching. If you like it, comment and hit the like and share buttons. Subscribe for future videos.